Welcome back to Baron's New Vegas Gun Guide. This time we are tackling the big brother of the Caliber Repeater, as well as the long counterpart of the 44 Magnum. Now the quintessential lever action of the West was the Henry 1860 lever action rifle. However, that weapon served as the base for the Lincoln Repeater in Fallout 3, or at least that's pretty likely. The lever actions of Fallout New Vegas are more based on the Marlin 1894, which features the iconic loading breech right below the ejector port. Additionally, the guns in Fallout New Vegas relatively match the color of real-life Marlin 1894s. The lever action gained popularity when people were sick of reloading their rifles after a single shot, but hadn't worked out the kinks of gas blowback systems. While in modernity, the popularity of these once venerated firearms have faded, it's hard to argue against their effectiveness when you start leaving a trail of bandit bodies in your wake. Unlike the 44 Magnum, the trail carbine has little in the way of technological advantage over the previous version. The biggest changes come in the form of the sights, which are no longer an obscuring peephole sight, but a V-notch sight. This sight lets you keep your situation awareness and still line up sucker punches of lead downrange. Now onto the stats of that sucker punch. First off is its damage of 48, which is a 12 point increase over the revolver and a 16 point increase over the cowboy repeater. But its magazine and fire speed are smaller than the cowboy repeater at 8 rounds fired at 1.5 rounds per minute. This contrasts only to the fully modded cowboy repeater, which is significantly cheaper than this weapon. Now, despite the lack of ammunition and its slower fire speed, it has a higher DPS due to the bigger bullet of 73.8 damage per second or 41.7 with reload in protracted gunfights, which is about 30 to 40% more than the Cowboy Repeater. Now for VATS, the AP cost is a bit heavier than the Cowboy Repeater at 29 AP, which ends up being a ratio of 1.66 AP per point of damage. Now onto its mods, like the 44 Magnum, this gun has the option of a modded sight. Except for instead of it being a 1.6x scope, this one is a 2.6x scope. But beware, its usefulness is kind of hit or miss. Because with the lever action spread of 0.06, and the fact that when you aim down sights, the gun does move up and down to go with the cocking of the weapon, its edge of usefulness is about at that range, and trying to snipe with it is hard to do past the first shot, especially with a moving target. Now moving from the long range to the short range, the more important factor is, how does it reload? Now, like all other lever action repeaters and the 357s and some of the shotguns, this gun reloads on an interruptible cycle, so it reloads one at a time. Now, the only exception to this is the Lalage carbine, but that's neither here nor there. So it takes about a 0.5 seconds to reload one shell once the animation starts spooling up, which I don't know exactly how long it takes, but I'd say it takes another half second to get it going. Now onto the last of the combat stats, we come to its crit performance, which unfortunately it is lacking when compared to a sniper rifle, which has about a similar cost per ammunition range, but having a better scope. The trail carbine only has a times one percent multiplier and does two times damage thus making it not the best weapon whenever used in a crit build. Now we move on to some housekeeping things, and that brings us up to durability. And it is staggering in terms of all the other guns we've covered so far, as it is 2,495 shots of regular 44 Magnum ammo, or 3,329 shots of 44 Special ammo, from fully repaired to broken. You could take a brand new one and finish the base game before it even gets close to breaking. Something the gun runners put in, I guess? And then from durability, we go to weight, which at 5.5 pounds is surprisingly light for a weapon of this kind of power. And it coincides with a strength requirement of 5 and a gun skill of 75, which places it as usual for a char base character to carry around and use, but you need to be a skilled gunslinger before you can start slinging this thing around. And now, speaking of gunslinging and lead slinging, we gotta talk about ammo. Which, it shares the same ammo pool as the 44 Magnum Revolver. And so, starting with the standard ammo, it's 3 caps per round. You got hollow points of 7 caps per round, damage 1.75 times, and with AP times 3. Now you get more use out of these in your trail carbine versus your 44 Magnum Revolver, simply because the trail carbine, it has more damage. So that AP multiplier isn't going to really affect it as much because you got more damage to overcome it. Now bringing up the rear with ammunition, we've got the 44 Special at 2 caps per round 
which only uses up 75% durability versus the standard round, but only does 75% damage. And then we go to the same player made exclusive semi wad cut round that we get from either the Handloader Perk or Jewels of New Vegas, which at base value of 4 caps, but increases your damage by 20% and reduces enemy damage threshold by 6. Which, despite the fact that you can't buy them in mass, makes it really the winner's choice. And now on for the economics of the weapon itself. Which, with a base value of 3,900 caps, the scope of course being an extra 1,500 caps, you're looking at quite a pretty penny to pay for this gun, especially if you buy it from gun runners newly minted at 98% condition. You may be able to strike a deal with the Great Cons. There's a lot of quests and stuff that let you lower their price points to a point where you get some pretty good deals from them. And plus, they sell it at they sell it at a lower condition, which means you have to pay less. You just have to have uh, something else to fix it with. Now, that doesn't even mention the 7,485 caps standard ammunition needed to break it. Now, going on to unique variants, as we do in this section, it is well, I regret to tell you that, sadly, this is one of the few guns that does not have a unique variant, making it almost unique in that aspect. Now, NCR Rangers of both flavors and Legion Assassins can, can carry them, but don't count on it. A guaranteed drop is from the Viper leader of Bonnie Springs. Now, if you can get to Bonnie Springs early in the game, well, if you can buy them 44 Magnum ammo, you're pretty much set for the rest of the game. If you... Oh, a gunslinger, that is. The Thorn has two guards with them if you feel like a bit of a bandit. And they can be found in the Brewer's Bootleg and Basement Gun Cabinet or Ranger Andy's Bungalow and Novak in a gun case. Those are ones you have to steal or get to, but those, for the most part, have no strings attached. NCR players can also get one at the safe house, but that one is about two shots from being broken. And before the end, there are two strange things with this torpedo. One is that it has two cut mods, a forged receiver, which was either probably going to be a durability boost in mod, or it was going to increase the fire rate. We really don't know, there's no more information on the files about it. If I had to base a guess, I'd say that it the gun used to be less durable, and would have made it to where it is now. And secondly, it had a custom stock, which if any of the other weapons are to go on basis of, it would have done something like reduce the weight. And allegedly, on Sun Systems, all of the lever actions can't jam due to a lack of animation for jamming. Now, whether that's true or not, I haven't done enough testing to find out. It takes a long time to break those guns, I'll tell you what. Now, in conclusion, we'll get to the Trail Carbine. It is a wonderful, wonderful mid-game weapon. It's really hard to beat something that fires pistol ammo, which, while kind of rare, it doesn't place it in the realm of impossibility to get especially if you fit with the whole Western appeal. And the fact that it can pack a punch from quite a long ways away comes with abundance of mods and has abundance of perks that affect it. It is one heck of a weapon to clean those wastes.